this is the big town of Pritchett. This is where Jamie and I moved January the 1st, 1978. And we came and pastored this little church. When I came here, there was about 10 people, maybe 12 people that had been meeting in this church. And I actually had made a contact with a friend of mine that was 30 miles from here in, even, in an even smaller town of Kim, Colorado. And he had been doing a Bible study over here for these people. So I came over and held a meeting and one of the men in this town was raised from the dead. And when that happened, I mean, news spread, and we started having a hundred people come to this little church. And this is where the Lord spoke to me about starting our radio ministry. I had done nearly two years worth of radio in Childress, but it was kind of an experiment. That's how we began our radio ministry. It's right when we were ministering right here. <laughs> This is where we live back in 1978. This is where I started duplicating tapes and I'd go down into the basement and I had two tape recorders that I'd put in a shoe box and put the lid on to cut out the outside noise. And then I got high tech and put a patch cord between the two tape recorders and I'd start them and I'd start early in the morning and let them run. The last thing I'd do at night is turn them on and let them click off automatically. And I finally just told the church people that I couldn't duplicate anymore. I was putting out over a hundred tapes a month and it was taking all of my time. And so one guy said, well, how much does one of those duplicators cost? And I said, probably about $3,500. And he said, I'll buy that. And another one says, I'll buy all of the cassettes. And that's how we started our tape cassette ministry was uh, right here and it started while we were duplicating tapes right here in our basements where we started. It's been 32 years since I lived here and things look a little different. Either uh, my memory's changed or maybe the place has changed. So these were our apartments And we lived, I believe, in the uh, second one right there, the one that has B on it, Unit B. And so this was the very first place that we had an office. We actually put the office in the basement of this house. It was three stories. There's an upstairs and the main level, and then there was a basement. And this is where we started our ministry out of. And Jamie and I would uh, duplicate tapes and do all of that and eventually we moved to another place over here to an office space and actually rented a spot. Okay, we're still in Lamar and you saw the apartment where we lived and we actually began the ministry down in the basement there and as the ministry began to grow as we went on radio we just ran out of room plus Jamie didn't want uh, people coming into our house to work and so we actually rented a little spot right here in the corner of this deal, just one single room, and we hired our very first employee, who was Cindy Like. She later became Cinda Campbell. Her uh, husband still works in our ministry today, and um, she was our first employee. Then we had our second employee here, so we actually had two employees in this one little room right here in this complex, and this is where we pretty much begin our ministry. And so praise God, look at all of the great things that God has done to bring us to where we are and where we're going. So this is our uh, first office that we had in Manitou Springs. And I tell you, this was a miracle. It was about 3,000 square foot, and that's including the basement. We had a huge old, it used to be a coal burner heater in the basement, and we had, that's where we duplicated our tapes, was in the basement around that. 
And this was a total miracle because the people who owned this building, long story, but they lived in Texas. God showed them this building in a vision. They came here and got it, but they always had a uh, desire to make a ministry out of it. Wound up running a hotel, and after I think it was 10 or 12 years, they just decided that they were through doing that, and they heard me on radio and said the Lord told them to give me this building. And we moved in here on January the 1st of 1980, and we stayed in here for 12 years. The ministry grew to a point that we had all of our inventory stacked in the hall from floor to ceiling, and it was only wide enough for one person to walk through sideways. And when you got ready to go down the hall, we'd yell, coming through, and if somebody was coming from the other direction, they'd just have to wait, because if you meant, you couldn't pass each other in the hallway. So we stayed in here for 12 years, and then we moved to our next location in 1992. So around 1991, we just totally outgrew the facility in Manitou Springs, and uh, I was actually out on a trip, and we just had to have something, so Jamie and our manager at that time got with a real estate guy, and we found this facility on Robinson Street, and it was 14,600 square feet. It had actually been a police substation. When we moved in, we still had some bullet holes in doors where they had been practicing their quick draw, and it was kind of in a mess, but anyway, we got that and moved in there in 1992 and stayed there until 2002 when the Lord spoke to me about beginning to think bigger. And when we first moved in, it was 14,600 square feet, and I bet you we weren't using half of it. We actually rented out a portion of it to a, a church that meant in there, and another ministry was also in there. And it looked like that that was going to last us for a long time. But it was in 1993, just one year after we moved in, that the Lord spoke to me about the Bible college. And when we started the Bible college and moved in there, uh, I'd say within just a few years, that facility began to be overwhelmed. And by 2000, 2001, we were so crowded that we literally could not put any more people in. We had to put porta potties outside for the men to use in the winter and turned all of the inside toilets into ladies' toilets and uh, we just totally maxed that place out. And so that's uh, when we began to start looking for some more facilities and that's when the Lord spoke to me about I was thinking too small and He really used the way that I had envisioned the buildings to reveal that to me. And so that led us over to Elkton and our facility that we moved into in 2004. <music> As we started looking for another building is really what led me to realize that I was just dreaming too small. And uh, even Jamie, when we went looking for another building, we had 14,600 square feet at Robinson and she was looking at a 30,000 square foot building and said that ought to last us forever. And when she said that, my vision was bigger than that, but I hadn't communicated it. I'd gotten afraid because so many people just downplayed my vision. It didn't mean anything to them, and so it, it warred against me, and I'd gotten to where I wasn't speaking it. So I, all of this stuff about having to get a new place came together, and it was January the 31st, 2002, when the Lord told me I was thinking too small. I was limiting Him by my small thinking. So man, immediately I started thinking bigger, and this building is one of the ones that came available. It had been vacant for five or six years. It was kind of in a derelict state, and it was really the cheapest thing on the market because it hadn't been maintained, and, but it was 110,000 square feet. So we would be moving from 14,600 square feet to 110,000, but I prayed about it, felt it's what the Lord wanted us to do. So we moved in here. We bought it in 2002. I think we closed on it in December of 2002. And we moved in here in November of 2004 and uh, began to occupy this. And so here it is just 10 years later. Actually, from the time we bought this building or moved in, it's only eight years and we have totally maxed it out. We're talking about having to use the facility next door. And that's the reason 
that we are in the process of building this new Karis Bible College campus up in Woodland Park at the place we've named the sanctuary. So this has been a real godsend to us. What a blessing, but uh, praise God, it's time to move on to the next step. This is a huge step for us. I don't believe it's going to be the last step. I believe that there will be things beyond this. But at the moment, this is more than enough to keep me busy. And I'm just really excited about what God has done. And I pray that you see God in all of these steps. Coming from Pritchett up through Lamar into Colorado Springs, Manitou and all of these places and to see where God has led us to Woodland Park and to the opportunities that He's given us now. I tell you, it's just God. There's no way that Jamie and I could have done this. This is not a man, it's God. And we've shared these things with you to just document the faithfulness of God and to say that God is a good God and I believe that the best is yet to come. We will fulfill these things that He's led us to do and praise God, we're going to go far beyond that. Who knows the exploits that God has in store for us, but we're going to, we're going to experience them. We will fulfill what God has given us to do. So thank you for being a part of it. Especially thank you to all of you who've become a partner and have enabled us to do this. You know, God has given us the vision, but He hasn't given me the provision. He has given me the vision. You are the ones with the provision. And thank you to those of you who have enabled us to do this. God bless you.